Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding the field together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day the Lord is coming. But understand this, that the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. If we're always worried about what is left behind, we may never see what lies ahead. There was a little boy who was with his great-grandfather at breakfast one morning, and he looks across the table and he says, Pop, you sure look old. He says, well, I don't feel too old. Well, you are. He goes further and says, how old are you? He said, well, I'm, um, I'm 98. Wow, that sure is old. And then he says, Pop, what's your secret? And he looks around to his right and left as if someone's going to hear. He says, I gotta, I'll tell you my secret. The secret is where I grew up back in Texas, every morning at breakfast, I would sprinkle a little gunpowder on my oatmeal. <laughs> so the little boy hears all this, and you know, like little boys, they're going to listen to what their great grandfathers are going to say. And he grows, and he matures, and he develops over time. Over the years, the amazing thing is that little boy, he did practice what his great grandfather taught him. And as he grew up, he saw three children of his own. He saw seven grandchildren. He saw 12 great grandchildren. And the best thing that he left behind was a 22 foot hole where the crematorium used to sit. <laughs> Please do not put gunpowder in your own mouth. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying here today. But if we are so worried about what we have left behind, we will not enjoy what lies ahead. You know, Advent is a time of preparing for what lies ahead. Something to which I would argue is explosive in a very, very good way. We are preparing for Messiah. We're preparing for the Son of God to come once again into God's holy people, into this house of God where we worship Him and we adore Him and we praise His heavenly name. As we come into the sacred union, we also come in with our life. And our life is based on a lot of reflection. And sometimes that reflection is like uh, something to which we just yearn for what is the secret to get through the rest of our days. How can we move forward when there is so much behind us that we have left and we can't move away from it? We're going to talk a little bit about sin. We're going to talk a little about forgiveness. We're going to talk a little bit about being penitent in the season of Advent because it's necessary. It's an ingredient where God's grace is sprinkled upon us so that we can be responsive to the Word of God and the Son of God when the Son of God returns. At that time of Christmas, obviously, is what we all build up for. But Advent is a necessary season to where we continue to grow and to develop. As we're developing, we have to ask ourselves, how much are we holding on to and not truly leaving it behind? We need to see what's ahead. 
Do you feel that way sometimes, that we just can't, or you see somebody else? It's easier to see other people than ourselves. Oh man, their problems can be solved like that if they just move beyond what it is that they're struggling with. If they could just let it go and see what's ahead, they got more going for them than what's going against them. It would be a game changer. It would be, the world would open up to them. Advent is preparing us to make that transition away from that which bonds and bounds us to that self so that we can transcend to a new height found only in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we think about human development, I'm also one who thinks of community development. The church is more than just a single person. Would you agree with that? The church is a body. And in that body are many parts. And the many parts are to reflect the light of Christ. How easy it is, however, for that light to be diminished or cloaked or surrounded when we are not living into what our Father has taught us from of old. He's given us the secret to life and how to enjoy it, how to move, and have our being. It's to allow for God's grace to come in on a daily basis in word and sacrament to enrich us and to grow us. Sometimes we might think that our world's blowing up. I, I get that. Sometimes we think that it's apocalyptic. I get that. There's a lot of things out there to which we can see the light of Christ being diminished. But I would turn us once more back to the language that we find in Isaiah and the psalmist today. There's a lot of language there about location. You hear about Jerusalem. You hear about Judah. You hear about Zion. And when you look at that, this is like the generations that are growing up in God's house. We're seeing it from an, an infant of maybe Abraham. And then it gets to that next generation of Isaac or Jacob and then David and Solomon and all those people of Israel. And their focus, where they see God's presence, is in God's house. But when you read the scripture, it's not within walls, it's on a mount. It's on the Mount of Zion. And in Zion, that hill that's right outside the old city of Jerusalem, God's word comes down and moves through Jerusalem and moves through Judah. It just multiplies. We see a people being challenged not to always look at what's left behind. They can't get rid of it, though. It's like it's in their ancestry, like we have to always remember what we did wrong. And you can just hear the words of God speaking to them and saying, I need you to move beyond that. And you need to be the people that I'm calling you to be on this day. Worship. Be in my presence. A lot of times we can't because we won't. We won't because we're still bound by the things that Paul is teaching in his epistle. And those wonderful words that just come out of there of the things that we sometimes cannot leave behind because it's our past, but we made our present. That, that whole study of drunkenness and licentiousness and debauchery, all the, the sinfulness of man holds us hostage. And all we see is what was left behind. But yet, is it? If it is so present within us, how can we ever see what's ahead? In this time of Advent, we are encouraged. Jesus comes to us once again and says to us that you are my people. You are my children. And I'm going to give you the secret ingredient in order to live. And he simply says to them, will you take me? Will you take me as your father, as your one who loves you the most, as the one who was sent here to you to help you live. Sometimes we complicate things because of our sinfulness. Our sinfulness is complex because it's associated with pain, it's associated with fear, it's associated with things that are dark and depressing, and sometimes we just don't know how to see what's ahead. 
Advent is a special time of year to which we are always in a holy procession to be in a movement away from that which is our past so that we can go into what is our future. The kingdom of God, says Jesus, is here where I am. Where Jesus is, there is the kingdom. Where the kingdom is, there is life, and there is life everlasting. This is the conversation that each of us are being asked to have with our Savior Christ in the time of Advent. And I pray that you will. And I pray that you'll be nourished by God's sacrament, by God's word, each and every time that you come to worship God here in this place, this holy Zion, this city that is on a hill. This is a legacy. This is a place that is continuing in the prophecy of the Messiah. This is the place to where we will proclaim the good news of Jesus because the world around us, they just can't let go. They just can't move away from what is that past. They're so consumed with what is left behind and pointing blame, jealousy and quarreling and all those things that we hear in Scripture today. We are compelled, we are commanded, we need to move beyond all of that so that we can be open and reflect the light that Christ gives us. We're to put on the armor of light, put away the forces of darkness. And although those words sound good and important, it is still your decision to willfully move away from it. It's going to change everyone's life when they take Jesus truly into their hearts and trust in him. So today, as Jesus compels us in this time of opening up and preparing for his coming once again, do not be consumed by that which is left behind, but be open so that you can see what is ahead. And do so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.